Just left for the honorable member for Random Buren, St. George's. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I rise today to speak to Budget Implementation Act Number 2, and I only wish I could say that I was pleased to speak to this particular uh, bill. However, Bill C-43 does nothing to address many of the challenges facing my constituents in Random Buren, St. George's, and Canadians in general. This omnibus bill is clearly the product of a tired, void of ideas government that has completely lost touch with the people it is meant to serve. Once again, the Conservatives have introduced omnibus legislation full of changes that simply do not belong in a budget bill. At 460 pages with over 400 separate clauses, C-43 represents an abuse of power. To use a single omnibus budget bill to limit debate on a host of unrelated measures is undemocratic, and if the government doesn't recognize this, it really is time to put them out to pasture. Here, here. Using a single omnibus budget bill to limit debate prevents members of Parliament from doing their jobs and properly scrutinizing legislation. Since forming government in 2006 in their rush to push through legislation and by ignoring input from other parties, the Conservatives have cemented a disturbing number of preventable errors in law. By my count, Mr. Speaker, C-43 attempts to fix no fewer than 10 of those sloppy mistakes including many from previous omnibus budget bills. This is a government that has proven time and time again it is not interested in input from anyone outside of the Conservative caucus and the Prime Minister's office, even if it means Canadians will be negatively impacted. Take, for instance, the so-called EI tax credit proposed in Bill C-43. This flawed measure actually discourages job creation and economic growth. This measure in particular is bad for employers, bad for workers and those seeking work, and bad for the Canadian economy as a whole. In a recent report, the Parliamentary Budget Officer said the Conservatives' EI plan will cost $550 million over two years and create only 800 net new jobs. This translates into a cost of almost $700,000 to taxpayers for each new job created under the Conservative program. Canadians deserve a plan for jobs and growth. The Parliamentary Budget Officer has confirmed the Conservative's EI plan provides neither. While the Minister of Finance claims EI cuts for small businesses will produce thousands of new jobs, the numbers prove otherwise. The reality is the government's changes to EI encourage businesses to stay small and actually punish them if they grow and are successful. For instance, the conservative changes to EI will offer up to $2,234.04 to small businesses for firing a worker, but only up to $190.52 for hiring a worker. Furthermore, there is no requirement for job creation. Regardless of whether or not a small business hires new workers, remains the same size, or even fires workers, so long as a business pays less than $15,000 in EI payroll taxes, they qualify. This may be a tax credit, Mr. Speaker, but this is certainly not a job credit. There are currently over 6,000 Newfoundlanders and Labradorians who had a job this time last year but are now out of work. My constituents at Random Bureau in St. George's and people throughout the province face unemployment rates well above the national average. For young workers, job creation is even more important. Youth aged 20 to 24 in Newfoundland and Labrador face higher unemployment rates than their peers throughout the country. At a time when many are struggling with high debt loads, youth unemployment is high and many young workers are forced to leave the province to seek work. The Harper government continues to compound the problem. What we need in Newfoundland and Labrador is more jobs, not less. Canadians from coast to coast to coast deserve a government with a plan to encourage job creation, not a government that is committed to limiting growth. Right on. As the Liberal leader said, Liberal leader said Canadians from coast to coast to coast are generally worried about their future. 
For the first time in our country's recent history, people are concerned the next generation will struggle more than the present generation. Unfortunately, out of necessity, it has become common practice for adult children to live with their parents in order to make ends meet. And in doing so, making it difficult in some cases for the parents to even make ends meet. Such a practice was rarely heard of, but is now more the norm than the exception. That is why Liberals are committed to helping create the right conditions for investment and economic prosperity, which will foster those badly needed jobs. Our proposed DI holiday on new hires would reward employers for creating new jobs instead of rewarding employers for firing workers. The Liberal plan has been applauded by job creators throughout the country, such as Restaurants Canada, Canadian Manufacturers and Exporters, and the Canadian Federation of Independent Business. And yet the Conservative government refuses to consider a proposal that would be helpful, preferring instead to forge ahead with a proposal that is fraught with problems. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, this is nothing new. Since taking office, the Conservatives have also shown little respect for Canada's democratic institutions. The government has often refused to work in partnership with the provinces and territories to help solve many of the challenges our government currently faces. Last week, we heard about how this government is unwilling to listen to its provincial partners in terms of amending the Federal Provincial Fiscal Arrangements Act. According to an official, only Ontario was consulted about these changes, in spite of the fact that Newfoundland and Labrador would be affected by these changes it and eight other provinces had absolutely no say. The Conservative government didn't just ignore input from Newfoundland and Labrador, it ignored Newfoundland and Labrador altogether. This amendment was not one the provinces asked for. In fact, the same official who confirmed there had been absolutely no demand from any province for this change. None whatsoever. It is puzzling, Mr. Speaker, that this Conservative government is committed to pushing through a change that no province asked for and no province seems to want, while ignoring calls for policies and programs that will provide real benefits to Canadians. In some cases, Mr. Speaker, C-43 doesn't add support. What it does add are taxes. Many of my constituents are Brandon Buren and St. George's, as in other ridings. Seniors are often living on fixed incomes. For the government to add GST, HST to some services provided by non-profit health care facilities, such as residential services provided at an old age home, is simply wrong. At a time when the rate of poverty among Canadian seniors is rising, and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development is warning that current pension supports may be insufficient, adding to their financial burden is just not right. Mr. Speaker, now I will speak about what is not in this budget. In a 460-page document with over 400 separate clauses, there is not a single mention of veterans. Not one. After years of ignoring the needs of Canadian veterans and their families, the Conservative government had an opportunity to finally act. Instead, they chose to remain silent. In June, the Standing Committee on Veterans Affairs outlined a series of measures that would make a difference in the lives of veterans and their families. Without further legislation, the Department of Veterans Affairs can only act on the recommendations that don't require any new money. This leaves them unable to implement many of the recommendations supported even by the government's own committee members. In its response to the committee report, the government stated that, quote, the more complex recommendations require further interdepartmental work, budgetary analysis, and coordination with a wide range of federal departments, as well as with the veterans ombudsman and veterans groups, end quote, and will be dealt with at a later date. Why do complex recommendations to support veterans require the additional scrutiny when the Conservatives maintain many of the other measures proposed in this bill do not? Surely amending the Federal Provincial Fiscal Arrangements Act is a complex measure and yet, without consulting with the provinces, the government saw fit to include it. Why won't the government give veterans the same priority? C-43 was an opportunity to implement these recommendations. However, it has proven to be yet another opportunity wasted under the Conservative government. 
Sadly, Canadian veterans and their families will have to wait another year in the hope the Conservative government will finally follow through. This also would have been an opportune time to restore and enhance search and rescue capabilities, support Canadians with mental health issues, including PTSD, and address many more priority items. Unlike the Conservatives and their flawed budget implementation bill, Liberals are committed to growing Canada's economy and helping create jobs by investing in infrastructure, education, environmental initiatives, our culture, and science and technology. We believe that government must not only create the right conditions for economic growth, but must also ensure that growth is sustainable and will help struggling families. Thank you. Uh, questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Sandwich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank my honorable colleague from Radham Bureau in St. George, St. Paul's. I'm afraid I, I'm, I'm, I'm St. George's, of course, from Newfoundland and Labrador. I, I'm getting very few occasions to speak to this omnibus budget bill as a representative of, and the leader of the Green Party. What with time allocation, it looks as though I'll be denied any opportunity to give a 10-minute presentation on all the things that are wrong with this omnibus bill. So it, permit me to thank my honorable colleague for allowing me to ask her to confirm that this is in fact an omnibus bill that we have not, as many conservative members have said in this place, had for an abundant amount of time to study. It is not the budget which was tabled in the spring. It's an entirely different piece of legislation encompassing changes to many different pieces of legislation, many of which have nothing at all to do with the budget. And in the guise of a budgetary bill, measures that should properly go to committees to study them, even measures we might support, like the uh, creation of, a, of the Cambridge Bay Research Station, will only go to a, a, a committee of finance for inadequate study. I ask my honorable colleague if she wouldn't agree this bill should never have been presented as an omnibus budget bill. The honorable member for Rand and Burns, St. George's. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my honorable colleague for her question, recognizing again of the limited amount of time she has to speak to this, uh, to, this, to this bill itself. She is absolutely right, in fact, that when you look at the omnibus budget bill, there is so much contained in this that it really doesn't give parliamentarians the opportunity that they need to act on behalf of the people they represent. We don't get to scrutinize the legislation. Everything gets rolled into one bill, and of course, by the time you get to read the bill and look at the impact it will have on Canadians from coast to coast to coast, uh, we're limited in terms of the amount of time we get to discuss it. So these omnibus bills that are put forward by the Conservative Party on a regular basis are not fair not only to parliamentarians who represent Canadians, but are not fair to Canadians in general because they need an opportunity to hear what is being said and what is being proposed. And at the end of the day, we end up with voting on a bill that few of us have had little time to digest. Canadians have no idea what's involved in it. And then, of course, we're asked to vote. There may be some things that are good in it, but there are a lot of things that are bad in it. But so you can't vote for the good because you cannot possibly vote for the bad. Uh, Christian Comente, Honorable Deputy de la Salamon. Merci beaucoup, M. le Président. Euh, je remercie euh, la collègue pour son euh, discours. Euh, J'aimerais, en fait, qu'elle élabore encore comment, euh, avec euh, ce, ce budget ou ce soi-disant euh, projet de loi de mise en œuvre du budget, on, on a une économie qui devient de plus en plus difficile, avec énormément de disparités au travers des différentes régions du Canada, et que ce type de projet de loi-là ne fait qu'accentuer ces écarts-là euh, entre les différentes régions du Canada. Également, comment ce projet de loi, comme plusieurs des projets de loi précédents du gouvernement, continue d'agrandir les écarts entre les riches et les pauvres, entre les hommes et les femmes. Alors, euh, j'aimerais qu'elle élabore sur sur cette question-là, comment ces projets de loi-là, au lieu de faire en sorte qu'on répartisse équitablement la richesse euh, du Canada, ne fait qu'élargir les écarts entre les riches et les pauvres. The Honourable Member for Annenberg and St. George's. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And again, I thank my Honourable Colleague for her question. I think anyone looking at uh, what's being proposed in this particular bill would have to agree that it is not fair. It doesn't matter where you live in the country. Uh, I mean, the fact that they didn't even consult with uh, the provinces, with, with, with the exception of one province, with Ontario, in terms of fiscal financial arrangements, 
clearly points again to the fact that they have no respect for or any consideration for the impact that legislation they propose will have on Canadians, no matter what region of the country you live in or from what walk of life or what your income is. Uh, what we are finding here, Mr. Speaker, is that we have a budget uh, where input is limited, and it is only if it is input from the Conservative caucus or from the Prime Minister's office that it is considered. We are members of Parliament who represent Canadians throughout this country. We can bring valuable input to the table, but yet this is a government that chooses to t put measures in place that will have a negative impact not only on women and children and seniors and veterans, but they're not listening to how they could in fact improve things for people from coast to coast to coast. Here, here. Uh,